What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Tokenizer, and I'm here to bring you guys in-depth analysis, news, and insights on the digital asset space, along with the progressive tokenization of the world. In today's video, we're going to be going over some of the projects and applications being built on Constellation's Hypergraph network. For those of you who aren't sure what Hypergraph is, I'll leave a little link up here for an introduction to Constellation and Hypergraph. But a brief summary would basically be that Hypergraph is a true layer zero protocol that's working to build a more robust version of the internet suited for big data, IoT, AI, all those sort of things that are coming in and requiring a lot more throughput than our current hypertext transfer protocol. But they've also got a bunch of other applications on their platform, which is what we're going to be talking about today. And before we get started, I just got to go over the usual. I'm not a financial advisor and nothing you ever hear or read from me should be taken as financial advice. But now that we got that out of the way, let's get right to it. So what makes it so special to build on Hypergraph anyways? It's not even a super well-known platform, so it doesn't quite have the network effect like Ethereum does. And pretty much all these other developers are building on these other higher market cap Ethereum killers like Solana, Luna, AVAX. Well, Hypergraph is not only feeless and horizontally scalable, meaning that as more nodes join their network, the more scalable and decentralized it gets over time. All right, so the first project built on Hypergraph we're going to be talking about, we got to start with their DEX Lattice Exchange. Now, this is going to be the trademark exchange for the Hypergraph network. They've even got a couple of Constellation's co-founders on the team, like Ben Jorgensen, Diggles, Matisse. So first off, they're taking a compliant route with this DEX, unlike a majority of the other decentralized exchanges out there. So there is going to be a KYC. Now, what separates Lattice from all these other DEXs out there is that they're not just your usual automated market maker. Thanks to the fact they're built on Hypergraph, they'll be able to perform cross-chain swaps at near instant speeds. But on top of that, they've got a bunch of other cool features. Of course, there's things like governance and voting rights, just like many of these other DEXs out there. But they've also got a launch pad where you can stake your LTX tokens and fund early to mid-stage projects for allocations to some projects developing on Hypergraph or to certain Constellation related products like the Door Traffic Miner, for example. They've also got a lending mechanism on their platform so you don't need to sell your crypto to realize and use your gains. You can simply lend for fiat against them as collateral to save yourselves from the capital gains tax. Again, not financial advice, but I suggest you guys really do learn about the whole collateralized loan thing before you dive right in. Because if you do do it wrong, there is a chance they can liquidate your collateral. And I'm sure nobody wants that. Now, on top of just lending against your crypto for fiat, they're trying to make this as inclusive and a friendly platform for everyone as possible. So they're going to be adding a way for fiat to on-ramp into the Lattice Exchange, which is something you pretty much never see happen in the world of DeFi, because fiat pretty much doesn't exist there. And I know the whole ethos of crypto is to get rid of fiat, but for the time being, if we want widespread adoption, we're going to need convenience for everyone. And well, I'm sure you guys could see why on-ramping fiat would be so much easier to learn for someone than buying stables from one exchange to send it into your wallet just to use another exchange. Now, speaking of learning, they are actually even integrating an academy to really make it as user-friendly as possible, which I don't think I've seen with any other crypto projects out there. I couldn't really find all that much info on the academy, but my guess is it's probably going to be some fairly introductory stuff like how to safely store your wallet, send or, and receive tokens across wallets, how to provide liquidity and allocate to staking pools, and just the general basic stuff like that. Because I'm sure most of us see these things as just basic day-to-day -day activities now, but try to think about how confusing these DeFi applications first looked when you just got into the space. I remember myself being hella confused and just looking around like, what the fuck is liquidity providing? So yeah, an academy means more beginner friendly and thus more retail users would probably be more inclined to use Lattice. And being the trademark exchange of Hypergraph, of course they got support for the Hypergraph ecosystem overall with programs for soft node staking, 
This is where all you need to do is have the collateral for a DAG node, which is 250,000 DAG or 45,000 US dollars, give or take, with DAG currently at about 18 cents. Users pretty much just have to provide the collateral and just like that, they can start earning from the validator node reward pool. And this program's actually been seeing a lot of growing demand lately. In the most recent staking pool, we saw over 1 billion DAG being locked up, or about 40% of the total circulating supply, which is just ridiculous. I mean, almost half the amount of the total circulating supply is being locked. So overall, the vision for Lattice seems awesome, and it's one of the exchange tokens in my holy trinity of next generation exchange tokens, and that's Unison, LCX, and Lattice. These guys all have ecosystems growing in their own respective exchanges, but also have compliance embedded into their projects, all while still having some superior features to your usual current generation exchanges like Uniswap or PancakeSwap. Next, let's talk a bit about Alchemy, which is another decentralized exchange project built on Hypergraph. But here's the catch, it's not your usual decks where you're swapping digital assets back and forth. This is a decentralized ad exchange. Their team is taking a different approach to the whole advertising system we see each and every day. In an industry where us retail are the products and we get nothing but ads just shoved down our throats all day and night, I don't know the exact numbers, but I've read some statistics where a majority of the investments in the advertising industry just gets buried away with all the other ads out there. In 2020, the advertising industry surpassed $340 billion. So while integrating advertising into crypto sounds a little weird at first, there's a lot of problems in that sector and a lot of potential for lucrative solutions. So now advertisers can bid for a spot for their ad and they'll make it so for ads that take more bandwidth, they'll require more ADS tokens to do so. This isn't just directed to like big time marketing and advertising companies though. Think maybe you want to start a business around selling, I don't know, socks that light up and track your footsteps. Well, that's a pretty niche target audience, right? And as we've seen with the current advertising industry, just shoving bullshit down people's throats at random doesn't quite work. A lot of the money in marketing campaigns would go to waste just for the lack of attention and interest people would have for ads since 99% of the time they can't even relate to or care about what they're being advertised. Think of it. How many times do you guys just skip any YouTube ads you see or just simply have ad block turned on? I know I do because half the ads they give me, I just see no value in it for myself. Rather, Alchemy is making it so advertising will be relevant and relatable to those who see these ads us and incentivizing everyone with rewards in that whole advertising ecosystem to actually want to participate and not just set up ad block because that pretty much just puts an end to the whole online advertising thing right so alchemy is a super unique project attacking an industry that doesn't quite get enough notice about all the flaws in there with Ben Jorgensen having years of marketing experience before he founded Constellation, being an advisor of this team, I personally think that what Alchemy is trying to build is quite innovative and I really can see them being successful in being the first decentralized advertisement exchange. Next up, let's talk a bit about GeoJam, which is another project on Hypergraph and they're working to connect the creator economy through tokenizing communities and content, specifically within the music industry. So in the current music industry, only about 12% or so of the total revenue goes to artists, according to Rolling Stone. This was back in 2018, but my guess is that number is probably fairly similar to today, if not even less with all the other intermediaries that have come up since the pandemic. And these centralized platforms are the ones who capitalize off all the engagement that we provide to these artists. And I'm sure I don't have to say it, but as you guys know, without these artists, this industry pretty much doesn't exist. So GeoJam is making a platform where us fans of these creators are incentivized for showing our support for our favorite artists, either by rewarding users in their jam token for showing love and support to their favorite artists, or just engaging with each artist's communities in general. And in return, users can trade in their GeoJam points and jam tokens for merch or tickets and other exclusive content from some of their favorite artists. So some of the things that they'll be integrating to bridge us fans closer with our favorite artists are like proposal pools where fans can vote and stake their tokens to propose any idea they have to their favorite artists to turn into a reality. So it could be things like an artist making a song with a beat a fan created or maybe someone 
or maybe a fan wrote some lyrics that they want their artist to turn into a song. So currently their app is accessible on iOS and soon Android and through connecting through their app to your Spotify, you can then earn rewards for your engagement and participation to your artist's content and their communities. I actually really like the idea for what GeoJam is doing through creating a platform where artists can connect closer with their fans as a lot of artists have claimed that they want a deeper connection with their community. And rightfully so. If you're an artist who started from nothing and built up a community of fans that love and support what you do, when you want to give back and show love back to the community that brought you to where you are today. Now let's continue on to the whole fans and creator theme by talking about token events. And this is more so built with the intentions of tokenizing the fan experience and creating value out of those set experiences. It's pretty similar to GeoJam, but but the main differences being that GeoJam is more focused on the music industry, whereas Token Events is more focused on the fans as a whole. So like, there's fans across most industries, right? From sports, to music, to gaming, to cinematics. So they've split this whole economy into three categories, from fans, to entertainers, to venues. So us fans will get the ability to tokenize our fan experiences. So things like going to a concert or seeing a game winning play and then turn that into a non fungible experience, allowing that specific moment to have value decided by that community. And just like GeoJam, with every interaction fans give, they'll be rewarded for their loyalty and participation. Then entertainers, so like artists and athletes. They can now get direct access to stats of their fans' behavior and opinions, which hasn't been possible until now. Entertainers now get to see what their fans are wanting more of and what they're disliking, and directly connecting with their fans while also offering them exclusive events and things like VIP experiences to their most loyal fans. So this gives both the fans and the users an incentive to produce good content and the fans to continue showing their support. And now venues. So the venues will get access to things in real time for events. So think of data like how many tickets have been purchased, how filled the arena is, how much revenue is being generated relative to expenses, how well is the merch selling, how well is the food selling, all that kind of stuff. So this is going to completely digitize the whole live experience part of the entertainment industry. And and now we can all get some value out of the events that hold a special place in our hearts out of that respective community's demands. Entertainers can see what fans are demanding more of and connect closer with some of their most loyal fans, maybe through a sponsorship or giving them special access to meeting some of their favorite entertainers. And venues will really benefit from all this since now they'll be able to integrate distributed ledger technology into all parts of these venue events to get real time analytics on the status of the performance of these events, seeing what performs well and what isn't all that popular. But now let's get a little into the betting and gambling industry. So one of the newer projects announced on Hypergraph is Double Dice. And they're pretty much focused on building a peer to peer like pools where users can bet against other users without needing a house or a host. Of course, it's a huge subsector that's been growing even more rapidly ever since COVID hit as we've seen with DraftKings. They'll make it so that you can you can bet pretty much anything with a controversial outcome. Sports, politics, Grammy Awards, you name it. And they'll do so by allowing any user to host rooms so that it remains peer to peer and decentralized with thousands of betting rooms rather than just, you know, the centralized house always wins saying. And of course, they'll have virtual casino games and they're even looking to integrate those into the metaverse so you don't got to spend money and fly out to Vegas just to gamble your life savings away. You can do that in the comfort of your own home now. So now, why did Double Dice choose to build on Hypergraph? Well, think in the longer term. If Double Dice gets big and has, say, like 50,000 betting rooms or so, imagine the bottleneck and congestion that would happen on Ethereum if that amount of demand happened. Or even worse, on Solana, you can't even place your bets because the servers are down. And that's not me just completely shitting on Ethereum and Solana. Ethereum is actually one of my top five largest holdings in my portfolio, but let's be honest, there's some work that needs to be done for them if they really want to scale to the needs of global adoption. Think of something like betting on who's going to win the next president of the United States election. That betting pool would probably have a fuck ton of people flowing in and placing their bets since it's such a controversial topic and can really only swing one of two ways, right? 
The demand for something of this that scale, especially because these would be globally accessible, would be absolutely wild and would definitely need a platform that can scale to fit the amount of demand. So now let's say you want to open up a betting room with some friends to bet on a variety of sports, maybe some MLB, some NBA and some NFL. But eventually you want that room to grow and have more users in there. So you, you can have a network of people who are also also interested in sports gambling. Well, now you can not only make new friends of similar interests, but you guys can all participate and compete in an organized betting room without the need of a third party. Or maybe you just want to find a room to gamble and play some solitaire or blackjack with other people without having to go to a casino. So while I'm not much of a gambler or into betting overall, Something like Double Dice does make me more inclined to maybe play some bets in the future on some sports games and I'm sure imagination will take its take its role and we'll see some wild bets we hadn't even thought of be bet on like maybe will the Fed really raise rates or will mask mandates still be a thing by summer 2022. Next up we'll take a quick look at Greenheart CBD. So Greenheart is something that's probably completely different from most of these crypto projects out there. Their goal is very unique and it's to create an economy where farmers across the world who oftentimes are unbanked and severely underpaid, like most of these guys are living on less than $2 a day for literally working their asses off, whether rain or shine from dusk till dawn. And they're getting paid less than a cheeseburger each day, even though these guys are the sole reason why we can go into a grocery store and choose what groceries to buy. And a lot of times, especially in time, in these times of heavy inflation around the world, these guys often aren't farmers by choice. It's more of a generational thing where because the initial generation were farmers not making the money they deserve, they continue to live and work on the farmlands without another alternative. And it's basically an unfortunate, never ending cycle. So Greenheart CBD is going to be working with providing economic inclusion through things like digital wallets to the entire agriculture industry, while also providing them with things like technology and education to start growing hemp for CBD. Because while weed's still a bit of a controversial topic around the world, CBD has been legalized as medication in a lot of places and actually has seen scientific evidence of helping with things like anxiety, chronic pain, cardiac issues, and there's actually even been recent reports of CBD actually helping with preventing COVID-19. <laughs> And it's a medication that's been rapidly rising in demand for being a healthier alternative to many of these pain killing drugs out there like opioids or ketamine. So Greenheart's gonna provide these guys with the proper tools and education to add hemp to the crops that they'll be growing on their farms for CBD production as another source of additional income. And their Greenheart CBD platform will allow for community led loan pools to farmers around the world to be funded for their CBD production. And on top of that, they'll even have a marketplace for CBD products produced from the crops of these farmers. Now, how this will play into laws with CBD distribution, I'm not too sure. But honestly, while this project sounds like a super niche market, and some of you guys are probably concerned about the fact that a crypto project is risky enough, now we're adding weed, another controversial topic into it. But the whole marijuana industry has been clearing the stigma over the past few years now, and we're beginning to see the acceptance and even healthy use cases of it brought to light, thanks to the development in science over the years. The fact that Greenheart is not only supporting the growth of this industry, but also providing a better opportunity to these farmers that have been stuck in the same cycle for generations now, is something that's quite unique and not just to the world of crypto, but just in socioeconomics. Now, that's pretty much the main crypto projects that have been built on Hypergraph as of now, but there's gonna be a lot more coming soon. And we're not quite done yet. I'm gonna share two other things being integrated on Hypergraph that have real innovative potential. So these two are these two projects are still somewhat in their earlier stages, but I figured I'd share them here with you guys anyways. So first off, we'll be talking about Jennyco, which is one of the only cryptos, if not the only one that's working to bring distributed ledger technology into the healthcare industry. They're going to allow us users or patients, however you want to put it, to take back more control of our own healthcare data. And for those of you who don't know, healthcare data is the most valuable data on the dark web. Why? Because it's permanent, right? If your bank account gets hacked, you can just ring up your bank to change your banking info. Your healthcare data gets hacked, good luck trying to change your DNA. 
So while there's not too, too much info out there on Genico at the moment, what we know is that now doctors can gather public healthcare data information provided directly by the users to better study whatever they might need to be researching on. Maybe it's a way to combat cancer, or maybe they'll try developing medicine that would be healthier on how certain people react to it. And of course, users will be incentivized through Genico rewards for their contribution at providing their data, either through Jayco tokens or redeemable things like DNA and biomarker tests. So while not quite at the scale of full healthcare data, think of things, think of the data you generate on, say, your Apple Watch. That's still data relating to your health and fitness activity and even habits. Apple just displays all that data for you to see, and they probably make a fortune off selling that to big data companies. What Genico is working to do is letting users take control back of their own data and be incentivized to share and monetize it to provide data to studies that will help create a better healthcare and medical industry around the world. I'm actually really liking this idea as I seriously think healthcare would be one of the biggest industries to get absolutely disrupted in terms of technology by distributed ledgers, right up there with finance, which I'm sure I don't even need to talk about for you guys to see how big that's gotten. All right, and I've saved possibly the most exciting for last. And this last project will be entering the void into a new paradigm of an NFT marketplace on Hypergraph that doesn't require crazy minting fees or any bottlenecks. Because of the versatility of data types, hypergraphs, layer zero state channels can validate, the versatility of these NFTs go beyond the typical ERC721 standard that we've seen. This is a community-driven project built from the community of hypergraph by none other than Mr. Digital Dive himself. But what really makes the void different from all these other NFT platforms out there is that they're really going with the focus on economic inclusion and participation through their NFT void pass. So not only does this pass look sick, but it also comes with a bunch of other exclusive features like reduced fees, exclusive members only events, airdrops, whitelisting priority, governance and voting on the platform, merch and discounts for products and services from some of their future partners. With a total supply of only 555 void passes and the fact that this is a fee-less NFT marketplace with a lot of other features coming out soon and not only being interoperable with other chains, but also a community fund that gets redistributed back to pass holders and the governance council, there's a chance that some of the most successful NFTs on the void are ironically these passes due to the amount of utility and likely the rising demand because of that. I'm personally super excited for the launch of this project and hoping to maybe even pick up one of these passes myself as I've been mostly sidelined watching the ETH NFT marketplace take off because I didn't want to spend a couple hundred dollars in mint fees. And also I'm a pretty big fan of what Mr. Digital Dive's been doing for the Constellation community for some time now. But yeah, that's pretty much the major projects building on Hypergraph at the moment. While still a lot of development to do at the infrastructure and foundation level, Hypergraph makes it not only a great place to build scalable products on, but also one that's taking a bit more of a professional and business-like approach with still a decentralized network that's also more community incentivized for participation. Now, speaking of communities, I just want to let you guys know that I've recently partnered up with Terra Moon Ventures, which is a community of passionate people in crypto working to not only find the best opportunities in the space, but also network and find ways we can all collaborate on and participate more in this exponentially growing digital asset ecosystem. I'll link my interview with the founder of Terra Moon Ventures, Brian Jun, here for you guys to check out. Amazing dude and really looking forward to working with him to build this community out of people just like us. So if you guys like the sound of all that, I'll leave a link down here below. And I've even got a special code for you guys to get 25% off your subscription. Tokenize. Apply that when you subscribe and you'll get 25% off for as long as you subscribe. I'm hoping to see some of you guys in there and get to know y'all better as we continue to learn about everything happening in this space. But for now, that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope everyone got something good out of it, whatever it may be. And if you guys liked what you saw today, remember to show some love by hitting that like and subscribe and turning that ringer on so you don't miss a thing. And if you haven't already, check me out on some of my other content platforms. You guys can always keep up to date or reach out and connect with me through Telegram, Instagram, and Twitter. Or if you just want more fundamental analysis content, I've got a bunch of articles on Medium. All this can be found at Tokenizer. 
And for those of you guys who don't quite feel like reading, I got you guys with the Spotify podcast right here at Tokenized TV. And we should be up on Apple Podcasts in the coming weeks. But until next time, guys, stay safe and keep grinding. I'll catch y'all later. Peace.